Thank you. I am so happy to be able to be talking to Therosia today, who is a triple threat of an artist, a poet, musician, and a painter. You can see some of her work behind her in her, her studio here, which is lovely and gorgeous. So I wanted to talk to two, uh, talk about two separate things. First, the business piece of art. So we talked a little bit on Instagram about needing, all artists need to sell their art. How do you figure out how to price your art? I used to price my art based off of supplies and how many hours I put in. Right. And then I went through a program called uh, Hustle Phoenix, which is a nonprofit, I believe, that teaches entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And they taught me a whole different concept of pricing, yeah. which was you're not just including your labor and your supplies that you use, but you're considering the price of restocking the supplies. Mm -hmm. And I was, because I kept, before that, I kept wondering why I was losing money, even though I was selling things. Mm -hmm. I sold shirts, but I wasn't considering the concept of my overhead, my light, mm -hmm. the amount that it cost to uh, maintain my studio. Exactly. And you have to consider all of that when you're an entrepreneur, because that's the way you're paid when you're an employee. They consider the cost of your living. And mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, we don't consider the cost of our living in our work. We, for some reason, think magically that our living will come from someplace else. And you have to consider, like, take your monthly bills, your the cost of your living, and break it over a course of the year. And every month, this is what is due. So you have to break that up over the amount of things that you will sell that month. And yeah. that is part of your pricing for every piece that you expect to go out that month. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, so smart. I've worked with a lot of people on pricing and, and some people don't even think about including their time. They just include the cost of the, of the supplies, like sculptors and stuff like that. You know, the supplies are so expensive that if I just recoup the supply cost, you know, then I'll make money. It's like, no, no you have to include, you have to be paid. You, we have to pay ourselves as if we are paying our, an employee. Yes, yes, exactly. So that the prices have to cover your salary plus running the business. Yeah, exactly. that's super smart. So when you were first looking at your numbers and figuring out how much it cost you to live, I've worked with a lot of creatives, especially when they start looking at money and numbers, they start getting hives or they start getting afraid. Did you have any, did you really? So describe that process because clearly you're over it now i am but it took me a long time uh my process first i had the benefit of being mentored in hustle phoenix uh. so that part um oye and his wife chris are amazing mm -hmm. and they they mentor people in the business aspects and they have different levels. So there's 101, 202, and 303, and they help you develop. I'm still wanting to go back and finish with that program, but just being confronted with the fact that I wasn't paying for myself to eat. And that part hit me, because I'm not a little chick. <laughs> I am thick, and I have no problem with being thick. I love my curves. So they have to be fed. <laughs> yes, they do. It's so the, it really helped to have somebody hold your hand basically and tell you that the fear was normal and natural. Yeah, that part. And then the other concept was I had to kind of hit a rock bottom financially. Yeah. Because after I told you earlier, I went through uh, losing my position at the financial institution because of a mild traumatic brain injury, but also because of that, I was temporarily homeless for a time. Oh my God, seriously? It wasn't total homelessness. I wasn't out on the street. I had 
family and friends that let me couch surf. But <laughs> the point is, I didn't have my own place to stay. I didn't have the money to pay for rent. I couldn't, and I am not the type of person who wants you to take care of me like that. Mm -hmm. I want to take care of myself. I want to be a contributing member of society. Yeah, so yeah. even though I was in that space, I was confronted. And part of that was while I was going through Hustle Phoenix and they were confronting me with, if you want to get out of this space, here's what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And, wow. So homelessness, that's traumatic. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's really scary. So so they told you what you needed to do and then we talked about this on instagram too that that i'm gonna and i'm gonna hold this up now because this is how people can get a hold of you so they can find you on facebook and also instagram and your website and then your TikTok handle is the same as instagram yes so it, what you were talking about was it's a numbers game that you need a certain number of followers and that produces the amount of sales that you need to have well, yeah, it's not just the, the amount of followers that you have, it's the amount of advertising you do. Because a lot of us, including me, we are afraid to advertise. Yes. So part of what I do is I do sneaky advertising. I do product placement with my own product. Oh, right. Like your t-shirt. Stand up. And yeah, let's so see that. Yeah. So people can buy this t-shirt on your website, which is a super cool. So talk more about how you do product placement like that uh so i have every monday i have a, a video that's inspirational mm -hmm. and that's just something that i give out because i need high inspiration so i give inspiration and yeah. for me just giving it helps me feel like i'm serving other people right so that meets my altruism needs because i need to be altruistic in some way mm -hmm. but i product place my shirt i do it in front of my artwork Mm -hmm. And I do post my website in all of those videos. And those are ways that people will decide they have the ability to say, you know what, I like this. I want to know more about this. And all, my websites are also in my uh, bio. So people can actually click on the bio and go into it and say, okay, well, let me look into her artwork. Let me look into whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they can choose to to pay for things or or to ask questions. There's a booking possibility in my website. There's a lot of things that people can do. Even if they just want to read my blog, it's there. Yeah, yeah. So that that's another thing when I work with creatives that they, um, they don't want to have a website or anything like that. They want you to direct message them. So you're doing a thing that I'm screaming and yelling about all the time, which is make it easy for people to buy. So you've got lots of different avenues and they buy from your website. Uh, most people, strangely enough, buy directly from me and I direct people to my website, but I think it's the ability to have options. Yeah. The people who don't know me, uh, like I had a, a sale on winter hoodies at the beginning of the year. So they were out Hustle Your Struggle hoodie. And I did a big release. I even did a model walk to advertise it on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. It, and it literally, everybody loved it. So yeah. I sold out of state and different places. It reached quite far. And that concept was just saying, I don't need the numbers but I need you to buy in and I need to make it easier for you. So yeah, I did put the website in this bio um, mm -hmm. and I even let people DM me to buy it. I let people cash at me. <laughs> right, well, we'll take cash. Yeah, that's good. How, how do you decide what merchandise to make? I mean, obviously you're painting and that's a thing and you're, and you're doing your music, but, and maybe t-shirts and hoodies are obvious, but, how do you decide? Um, for me, first, my artwork is central to everything. And yes. I try to buy, I try to sell the message I want people to receive. So it starts, first starts with an altruistic purpose. I want to inspire people. Out Hustle Your Struggle is not just a motto. That's a brand for life. That is how I live my life. Mm-hmm. 
I want people to understand that, yes, the struggle is real. Yeah. Yes, you are hurting. And that is not okay that it happened, but it doesn't mean that it gets power over you. Mm -hmm. You might have to out therapy it. You might have to out heal it. Right. You might, you might have to outlast it. Some things are just, I just got to stay on my feet longer than this struggle. Whatever it is that you have to do to out hustle this struggle, be willing to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you make a t-shirt that says out heal your struggle. I might, I might do that. I might yeah. do that. Well, that was such a profound statement. It, it's, I don't know what that, that's a, it's a different feeling somehow. Not sure why. So I'm going to hold this up again. This is how you get a hold of Erosia and take a look at her different pieces of merchandise, not pieces, but types of merchandise, plus your original artwork. So the merchandise that you sell, it, it originates with your artwork. Yes. And then, so it's, and it's inspirational. All of it. Yeah. Okay, so that may that is the driver for what you decide to do for merchandise. Yeah, it. I don't want to put out things that are um, commercial in the con in the strictest concept that I just put something out to make money. I don't want to create cash cows for the sake of cash cows. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a strong core of love and honor it it drives everything i do and if i feel like what i'm doing is not honoring other people like i'm just trying to get your money but i don't want to love on you i don't want to show you that you matter mm -hmm. and there's no point in that i should just go back to the regular world and make money as an employee right yeah that's true so i want to shift the conversation for a second about into social justice. So one of the things I've been harping on on my Instagram feed is just that art is the place where social the social change originates, I think. And so I was wondering if you'd hold up your piece that we were talking about. Yeah, it's so powerful. And so can you talk a little bit about the inspiration for this piece and what you want people to get when they look at it. Okay. So I'm going to put this down for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose it's too hard to hold up. <laughs> Can you put, well, I was thinking you could put it on the easel behind you, but are you on the, you're in the middle of that painting, aren't you? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. So never mind. The, uh, I have another easel, but it would take me a while yeah. to set it up That's and everything. Right. Uh, I started, painting in the summer or just before the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahmaud Arbery's death, Breonna Taylor, Atatiana Jefferson, George Floyd. It hit me real hard. I went through a really deep depression and I'm not an easy person to get depressed. I am naturally a very bubbly personality. I wake up happy. It's my bent. I couldn't pull out of that depression for a week. Oh, wow. I, I literally want, I literally struggle with thoughts of suicide. Because I thought to myself, what is the purpose of living on this planet that is so evil? What is the point of living in a world where my skin color, as pale of tone as I am, I am still a threat to people? Yeah. What is the point? I thought about that. I struggled really hard. And my faith is central to who I am. I am a follower of Christ. And... I remembered that love is the point. I was created to be loved and I was created to love. That's what I'm here for. 
and I spent time studying scriptures and looking at the church, it felt like such a betrayal for so many people of color to see the silence of the church, to hear people say that you're my brother in the Lord, but when it came down to our lives being in danger, well, you should be over that. That's a false narrative. You know, that all of this propaganda that was pushed out that ignored our real pain. And I was pouring over scriptures trying to figure out, God, where do you stand? Do you want me to just be quiet about social justice and follow you knowing that heaven will make all things right? Is that what you want? And I started reading scriptures and from Genesis to Revelation, there is a voice speaking out for social justice. Yes, there is. There is constantly some place where God is pointing out racism. And you don't recognize it as racism. Even when Jesus is speaking to the Samaritan woman at the well, they didn't speak because they were considered different tribes, different cultures. That was a moment of racism that Jesus was bridging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, if in Amos, he speaks of let justice roll. And if in... I forget which, uh, oh, Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9, speak up for the dumb and cause, those who cannot speak up for themselves. If we're called to do that through the entirety of the Bible, and God is constantly showing us spaces where these people who are considered holy bridge the gap of racism. Rahab the harlot who was in Jericho is considered another race, another culture, but Israel gave her harbor. We have all these moments um, Ruth, the entire, this book of Ruth, she is considered unworthy to be considered in the family of Israel. She is considered other. And God uses her as a symbol of what he will do with the entirety of the world. There is this constant concept of him bridging the gap. And yeah. so I, I poured over that and saw that God's heart is for social justice. Even with Jesus whipping everybody out of the temple. <laughs> He's like, don't abuse people and say it's in my name. That's not God. Mm -hmm. And um, it gave me passion. It gave me my heart back. It gave me my purpose in art. It made art. I already had a purpose to honor with my artwork, but this made it even it made it bigger. It made it more eternally valuable to me. Yeah. And so I painted from that position of this is this is the heart of God. This is not just me saying I I value my life. It's God saying I value all life, and you should too. You should be speaking up against this. Yeah. Yeah. The, so what? Two questions. What? impact you want that painting to make and what impact has it already made <laughs> so i'll show it again yeah and when i painted it i painted the background looks like a target but mm -hmm. it's actually a prayer maze and i wanted people to prayerfully invite themselves into a thought process that's what prayer mazes do you contemplate the concept or the idea or the struggle that you're dealing with or just even the concept of God himself. And at the center of the maze, you're supposed to meet the will, the idea, the moment of God. And I want it with my artwork, even when I'm being controversial, which some of my artwork is controversial, I wanted to invite people into a discussion, even if the discussion was internal. I wanted to invite people to consider something and really say, okay, me holding on to the safety of it not affecting me or wanting to say that's over or wanting to say I'm not racist, you know, that safety of saying I'm a good person right. and not actually engaging in what's actually happening. Yeah. I wanted people to say, okay, is my safety, which is not really safety. Um, <laughs> it's not. Uh, is it worth me being silent on the things that God is speaking loudly about. Yeah. And I wanted to invite them into that. Yeah. 
And then I forgot the second question. Um, oh, what impact is it already making? Well, the impact that it's already made, that piece, actually, I posted it into a group that I love. It is called uh, White People Doing Something on Facebook. And it is, <laughs> it has this uh, group of people who are trying to learn to be allies appropriately, not just the people, Black people, but all people of color, mm -hmm. people who are in the LGBTQ community, just like how do we appropriately be allies without centering ourselves, without being tone deaf or asking people to be tone policed? How do I do that appropriately? And that's a group for all of us to learn uh, and, and uh, vent. And so I just posted it because I wanted to share it. And it got shared, I believe, over a thousand times. Really? Wow. Yeah. And in that group, I also got a death threat from a troll. So <laughs> uh, well, I know we were laughing about that before. I guess that means you're totally on the right track. I mean, everybody that I admire has gotten a death threat at least once. At least, yeah, <laughs> at least. So have you, you've made prints of it? Yes, it actually, that one is actually available on my website, um, okay. outhustleyourstruggle.com. Okay. Yeah, so you can buy prints. You can buy prints that are uh, poster size, canvas prints. Most of my work that is available on that website, you can order prints in okay. poster size and canvas prints and even like eight by tens or five by seven. Okay, good. So last question. Too bad, but I know <laughs> at some point we have to cut this off. So it's the same question as the one on Instagram. I'm 18 years old. I'm trying to decide whether to be an artist or not. What do I do? Just go do it. Yeah. You're going to make mistakes. That's okay. Mistakes are a part of your success. Fail forward. That's a part of the way you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. keep All right. I'm going to hold this up one more time. This is Terosia. This is where you can get a hold of her and especially to buy either a print. Are you selling the original painting? Yes. Are, you, are you? This painting, I debated about it long I and hard. Yeah, um, this is like your baby. It is. That one was a passion project and I cried over it. But I have so many passion projects. If I keep them all. That's right. <laughs> my house will be full. So yeah. yes, I have decided to sell it. It is. I will cry when it sells. I will. I know I will. But I'm okay with that. Yeah. It probably has, I can sort of visualize its home. Someplace where lots and lots and lots of people see it. I hope so. Yeah. I hope it, I hope it starts conversation, yeah. even if it's just in their own heart. That's what I want. It. Yes. Well, thank you, Therosia. This has been so lovely. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Have a great day. You too.